Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Uh, we are continuing in 2 Corinthians, and today we're in chapter 9, verse 1, through chapter 10 and verse 18. Uh, Paul continues to write about giving, and the Corinthians need to finish what they started. <clears throat> so he tells them that a year previous, when they agreed to give unto Jerusalem, uh, he used them as an example in Macedonia, and this is what stirred the Macedonians to give so generously. The difference was that the Macedonians followed through on what they said they were going to do. We find here that the ones who saw uh, so sparingly will reap sparingly, and the ones who sow bountifully will reap the same. God loves a cheerful giver, and every person should give from their heart. God wants us to give to the ministry, but he wants us to do it with a cheerful heart. We should be happy that we get to give to the work of the Lord. God is also able to take that which we give and to multiply it. He will also provide for us uh, all uh, the days of our life uh, if we give to his kingdom. He's going to provide everything that we need if we give to his work. Uh, have you ever thought of the fact that when we give to others, it causes them to remember us in their prayers? Uh, they give prayers of thanksgiving and prayers of intercession. Uh, that is what Paul mentions here. Uh, we are blessed even greater because we have other saints praying for us continually in our own work for the Lord. Uh, chapter 10 is him essentially telling the Corinthians to stop listening to those who would take them away from his message and his leadership. Uh, we find here a passage that is all about our mind and taking control of it. Um, the false teachers, those were, that were trying to take them away, were trying to pervert their thinking, pervert their minds. And I want to read this to you, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We recently did a study on taking back our thoughts. Uh, we need to give our minds to the Lord and not allow the enemy to control the way that we think. The result of godly thinking is obedience. Paul was telling the Corinthians that their obedience would prove that they are indeed having control over their own minds. Through the end of the chapter, Paul deals with those who speak highly of themselves and their own work. The apostle didn't want to get into a competition, if you would, uh, with them or a bragging contest or anything like that, even though Paul would have won that. He says that the proof is in the fruit, and the end result is that we should only glory in the Lord. Uh, so do we do what we do for the praise of men? Or do we just simply want to be found faithful and commended by the Lord. I would much rather have God tell me, well done, Nick, than to have the praise of any man or any woman. Why? Because there's only one person that really matters if they're satisfied. There's only one, one, one uh, entity, if you would, uh, that truly has significance in, in what they think, and that is Almighty God. Proverbs 22, 24 to 27, uh, 24 and 25, we see that we should not be friends with an angry person because they will rub off on you and you will start to do what they do. That's the result. Uh, this reveals the old saying, bad company corrupts good morals. Listen, when you hang out with people that are angry, you hang out with people that are mean, uh, it's going to rub off on you. In verses 26 to 27, again, we see not to make deals that will get you into trouble. Uh, this goes back to being the slave to the lender. Uh, if you co-sign for someone else and then they don't pay, the creditor might come and take your bed out from under you, Solomon says. Uh, and so be wise in our business dealings. Be, be wise uh, with our finances. 
Let's bow our heads. Our wonderful God, we thank you again for your, this day. We thank you for your word. Lord, just bless us now. Help us as we come to church tonight. Help us uh, to, to come to your house and to focus upon you and to learn of you. Lord, uh, just help us to shine for you today. In Jesus' name, amen.